Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are here for the Tabs 3 virtual user group meeting presented by the fine folks here at Attorney Computer Systems. Me, Mary Jo, Patty, you've got us for the next half hour where we're going to be talking about report definitions and report suites, two separate topics, one, one unified theme. Without any further ado, I'm going to press the combination of magic buttons that will take me here to the tabs three report submenu so that Mary Jo can start by telling us about report definitions. So if you're like me, you run a lot of reports every day. And maybe you run the same report, but you run it in 10 different ways because you have different parameters that you want to run that report for. Different date ranges, different attorneys you want to run it for. And sometimes we're just going into those reports. Um, let's do a cash receipts report. Um, and you are just going in and rechanging, you know, who the primary timekeeper is, or you're going back and changing the date range, or whatever these things are, or maybe there's a report parameter out there already that every time you run it, you have to go to the sort and change it to say none, or by primary timekeeper, that you want grand totals and no subtotals, and you're clicking these things every time you run the report. Well, report definitions allow us to save the parameters that we want. We can make certain uh, defaults so that we can have a definition that's always our default definition. Maybe grand totals is checked, subtotal is not, it's run by none. That's my definition that I want to keep as my default. Well, there's ways to save that, and it's right over here under this, uh, this uh, load and the save button, right over on this side. So if I look at the load right now, uh, I will see that I have one parameter for the cash receipts report, and it is the default because it's got the little check mark there. And this is probably is the one right side outside of the box, you know, that we had that's in there. Um, oh, there's actually two. I'm sorry, there's another one above it. I didn't see that there. But there's one up above it too that's maybe a different parameter of that report, different definition that we've saved different things in there that we want. There's a couple of buttons up here at the top that you can show all report types and you also can show other users' reports. So if somebody else created a report definition and you want to can show the all of uh, report types whoops there we go and now this is showing me every single kind of a report that's out there that has a report definition defined and then who did it now if I'm in a cash receipts report and I want to run you know a client ledger report at a certain file definition of a client ledger report I can't do that from here because I'm in a cash receipts report right now I can only run the definition for a report that I'm already in so I don't usually click this on because I really don't care what other report types I have out there when I'm in a cash receipts report. If I'm in a client ledger report, I want to see all the client ledger definitions I have. If I'm in you know, receipt allocation, that's what I want to see. I don't want to see all those other report types because I can't run them from here anyway. So I usually have that unchecked. But if you just want to go out and see, well, what other definitions are out there for other reports, you can come back in and maybe you've given it a name and you like you can't remember what report it was that you ran, but you gave it a name that you could remember, month end cash receipts, and then you could come in and find that, oh, it was a cash receipts report. I need to get out of here and go into the cash receipts report to run that definition. So this can be helpful for finding the right report that you know you've saved a parameter for, but you can't remember which one it is. Otherwise, I leave it off. And then I also sometimes will show other users. It just depends. If I know there's report definitions out there that, you know, Susie down the hall created and I want to use it, I could put that on or off. So I'm logged in as Ron right now, so I wouldn't have seen those blank users. So that's where they're saved. So how do I save one? Well, first you go in and you pick all of the different parameters that you want for the, that particular file definition that you want to save. And once you've got that all checked off and this is what you want, we just click the Save button. Then we have an option right now. There's already a default out here for a cash receipts rep uh, report. It is even named cash receipts default. There's a little definition name. This is a little short name that you use all lowercase, no spaces. It's, it's just a few characters long, um, eight characters. So you don't have that much room to name this little definition name. You can expand it on the description. So this is just something short. This is like this one just says CR def for the default. 
this, if I'm going to do this one, maybe this is just, I'm going to rechange it to, um, you know, CR um, MJ. This is my version of that report. Give it a different description. This will be cash receipts MJ. If I can spell receipts right, there we go. <laughs> MJ. And then this one, I'm not going to make the default because I want this to be a separate version of the report. I want to keep my, um, my default out there but I want a different one here. I want a different version of it. So I only have one default, but then I'll have other versions. And then I also can decide whether or not whatever I type in this description displays in the report header when I run the report. I'm going to say OK. When I load the versions now, I've got a third version in here. And there's my cash receipts, MJ. Now, if I wanted to override the existing default, and I always want that to be my default from there forward, when I hit save, I can simply just leave everything just as it is, and I can make that the default. So when I'm on the actual default, I think I had already changed that one, but if I load the default version and I save it again, you see that box is checked. So if I had made any changes and wanted to override it, I would just leave everything the same. Everything's named the same. I would just say OK. That would override that version I have now, and I'd have a new default. Now you want to be very careful that you don't override the default unless you're the one that's going to always be running that report because if someone else is used to just coming in and using that report uh, that way as a default and then all of a sudden you change it and override it for you, you've just kind of wiped out their version of that report. So be careful if you're going to be changing the, the actual default of a report. Create as many other versions of it as you want, but just watch out when you do that part. So that's how you can change, and that's how you can load report definitions. Paul? Well, that's great. Um, saves a lot of time for me, and I think for you, Mary Jo, and I know for it a does. lot of our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, all I'm going to do is expand upon that just slightly. So Mary Jo showed you how to save. And it can be very, very time-saving. I mean, if, you, if you're going to AR, and you're doing it for a certain timekeeper, and you're doing a certain... Uh, include zero and, and in 30 days and whatever, and there's a certain format, and we're going to include this and this, but not that and that, and we're going to sort it this way. That's that's significant time that you're saving. Now, now I'm going to just one, I'm going to add one more thing, Paul. You know, I didn't say this, but this is available on all of our reports, and even on generate statements. Um, a lot of people will um, want to generate statements and have a certain format in here on the Options tab. They don't want to see task-based billing information. They don't want that statement run total page to, to print, so they're always on checking that. You can save that same uh, file definition for generate statements. Anywhere you see this load in that save, you can do this. So it's not just on regular reports. It's on all kinds of different things here. Anywhere that that's available, you can you can use this feature. P pretty much anywhere where you can print a report, including mm -hmm. including statements, mm -hmm. drafts, and final. Yep. So you can imagine the time that that would save, especially on certain things that you might spend three four minutes getting everything just right, or even longer trying to remember how you had it set. Uh, you don't have to take notes. You don't have to remember anymore. You don't have to do that now. Take that and multiply it by 10. And that's what I'm going to show you. Because if Mary Jo can show you how to uh, take a report and save its definition, what I'm going to show you is how to take all the definitions for all the reports that you run at the end of the month, let's say, and lump them together. So what you do is you go into reports and you go into what's called report suite down here at the bottom right hand corner. And you run the report suite manager. And this will show you all the definitions that are saved in the system. Now, again, we have this checkbox down at the bottom. I can show just mine, or I can show all users' report definitions. So let's say that we did a ledger this way. And I'm going to click Add. I don't have to click New because I don't currently have anything up here. I'm going to click Add, and look what happens. It jumps up here. And I also do an AR by invoice for a certain client. It's just something I do for them. And I do a client analysis report. And I do a quarterly receipt allocation and a timekeeper profitability and maybe five other things. 
And by saving this suite, and we're going to call it PEP, that's me, Paul Edward Purdue, um, and giving it a name like Paul's Month End Reports, I've now created a suite that I can then come back and load later, just by doing this, and run it. And what happens is, gives me a couple options. It can let me choose the base date, which defaults to today, because sometimes it's using today's date in a report definition. And maybe you want to run this uh, for Monday, but you're going to do it on Friday. Okay. And you can either run it now or you can run it at a certain time or delay for a certain number of minutes. So maybe these reports kind of drag down your system and the people complain that it takes a couple extra seconds to save a fee entry or things just run a little bit slower when you're running all these reports at the same time. These aren't going to, but maybe they will in a big firm with a lot of data and some very complex reports. So you can either say wait two hours until everybody's gone home or you can say run at 7 p.m. when everybody's gone home. Or you can just say run now. And what it does then is gives you the ability to preview or to print. And if you're printing, it's gonna it's going to, and I'm getting nothing printed all over the place, that's all right. And what we're doing here is we're loading up multiple reports in multiple windows. Because I said to display. If I had said to print, it would have just printed them all out on my printer. And so here's my client ledger, which nothing printed on. Here's my Timekeeper profitability. Here's my receipt allocation. Ah, nothing printed there. Here's my client analysis. So these are all the reports with the definitions having been defined. Now, a couple caveats you have to be able to use predefined definitions. So you can't just say run a client analysis report if you haven't saved a report definition like Mary Jo just showed you for the client analysis report. So if you've got 10 reports that you want to build into a, a, a massive report suite that just runs all at the same time, you don't want to uh, do that until you've, def until you've set up the report definitions on each individual reports level. You, you have to have that first, and uh, then you just go in and run them. You create it, you save it, and you run them. Let's get back to the report suite. Oops, report suite manager. And you'll notice that in this, I have the ability to add and remove programs from report suites and save them and load them and create a new suite. I, I can't just run them. I, running isn't the only thing I can do here. I can create new suites and load them and save them. And because of that, you may not want certain people that may need to run report suites in here. So one other thing I want to show you is that we also have, oh, I'm in trouble now. I clicked the wrong button to get out of here going back into tabs. We also have the ability to simply give somebody access to the run report suite. That doesn't give them the ability to, to load and save and create new ones. It doesn't show us all the definitions. It's really just a place to go to run a predefined report suite. I'm going to interrupt for just a second because Patty tells me we have a, we have a question. Patty? Um, actually, we have a couple questions, Paul. Okay. Victor would like to know, can I print a report suite to Dropbox? Yeah. If by Dropbox he means this thing down here, not Dropbox, the thing online, which I think he does. This is Dropbox. So when you go to do a report suite, you give it this information, and then you say, I want it to run to Dropbox. And that's all you do. And say, OK. Instead of, I previewed. I could have said printer and said OK. I could have said file and said OK and given each one a separate name. Or I could say Dropbox and say OK, and they would all go down to Dropbox. What else do you have, Patty? Joanne would like to know if we run reports on the first of every month, but run the reports for the prior month, is there a way to save a report but have the month change without having to manually change them each month? There is. In report definition, nowadays, the ability to specify periods for certain reports. Let's say 
Mary Jo, cash receipts. And that's in management and cash receipts and options. But I'm looking for periods, current month, prior month. Okay. So if you put in payment date of uh, the first through the end of the month and you specify a report date that's within the month, then later when you run it, if you specify, let's say you specify this, so you build this in March, which I believe has 31 days. And so you put in March 1 through March 31 and you're running it in March. Uh, so it knows that it's basically a report that runs from the first to the end of the month. And um, doesn't matter what the report date as long as it's within the month. Then what it'll do if you run that in February with a report date of February, it'll put in one, a two one of whatever year through two twenty eight of whatever year. Okay, Mary Jo's telling me that I can also use this opportunity to show you is it under report suite or wouldn't be under definition. Okay, and she's saying that I should use this opportunity to show you this yellow question mark because it allows me to explain how help works. You sure you don't want report definition? Are you muted? No, talk to me, talk to me online here. I can't because all they muted. hear is me going. Ah, I know. Yes, I know. You know. I'm just trying to give them this little subtle <laughs> things here. But in here, you can um, you can define. I know there's some information in here. It's either there or it's underneath the um, the running of a report suite. But there's the base date. Here it is. So you have to specialize speci specify the the date base, and then there's some information in here of when you can and how you can pick that. So go back um, up to date variables. And I think there's even some notes in here go, go that back, you can also do. Go back up to date variables. Click on date variables. Where are you at? Go ahead. Right. I just went into date variables, mm -hmm. which allows us to use a variable to specify the current date or the beginning month or end month or end mm -hmm. year or beginning year in defining your definitions. So when you define your definitions, if you use, I did it again. You just don't want to I'm really good tabs. at this. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Bless you. If you go back in and we go into reports, and let's say AR reports, and we go into detail AR, then what they're telling us here with these date variables is that we have the option, oops, I guess I want to get into load, and, oh, I see what you're saying when you talk about Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see why you're saying to go into the report suite. Yeah, the it date just option. gives you, you know, if you want to run that report suite by a certain date, it tells you right in there how to set up your definition to do that. So it's, it's underneath that yellow question mark under the report suite manager, and then go to the date variables, and you'll see there is a way to do it. And it will, you know, give you that beginning and ending of each month based on that. And then we you go just back say the report base suite. Date and Report Suite Manager and click on the yellow thing and then get up to here where it talks about um, where were we? New Suite? Mm -hmm. you gotta... No. No, you're in the, in the run. No. <laughs> where were we? We were... Scroll down. running a report suite. There we go. And then the date variables. So that's kind of hard to get to. Let's do that again. Let's get into report suite manager and go into help. Get down here and go on to running a report suite. There's probably an easier way to get here, but I'm going to show this way. It's probably under run report suite too. So if you were on, instead of on the, the manager, 
the, the report suite manager. If you were on the other one, run report suite, it would take you right here. Gotcha. And then you can get into the date variables. date variables. And there's also a video on there that you can watch about it too that will help you with that. Um, so that you can see that it was right on the previous page. Okay, so if um, we go back here, we've got a video we can watch. And then specifically on the date variables, it talks about how to put in the current date, the beginning month, end month, beginning year, and end year. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is, and what this person was asking is, how do I make it for last month? And the way to do that is to, to use beginning month, end month to define what the month is, and then uh, use the right date for, for your base date when you're running the report suite. Patty, there's another question. Where are report definitions stored? Tabs help for date variables suggest editing them manually. Hmm. I don't. Well, they're under each of the, any of the reports. So if you go into these, I mean, if you go into your load, they're all in here that you can get into to change those manually in here. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's what that means. And when they say changing them manually, they're saying loading them and then changing them before you run them, which is not an option that you have when you're running a report suite. But if you're running a definition, if you just load a definition, it puts all the right stuff there, but it doesn't run it, and then you can go change certain dates. And that's what they mean when they say changing manually. I don't think we have access to them. I don't think there's stored in a, they're not stored in a file out in the, in Windows Explorer. They're not stored out here. Uh, and therefore, I don't think there's something that you can actually see here, and I think that's what the user was thinking. No, if you if you define like on this report right here, if I defined one one to one thirty one um, for that month, when I run the report suite, it's going to always go by whatever the current reporting month is set for tabs. So if I go into the current reporting month and my month is January, it's going to run it for January. If I, my current reporting month is set for March, it's going to run March 1st through March 31st because my current reporting month will always come in on a report suite and run whatever that is for that current reporting month. So as long as you have this set up as a month, then you're okay. And you're in the spec correct current reporting month that you want to run it for. So if you're in March already and you wanted to run for February, without having to come in and manually change this, you have to make sure that you go in and change your current reporting month um, to be February, which now is easy because we can go back and forth with that, you know, setting it back to January, setting it back to February, wherever you want it, and then change it back when the report is finished. So as long as you have the right current reporting month and then that's a monthly or whatever the range is, it'll automatically pick up that month that you're in. Right. Okay. Got it. More questions, Fanny? I think you may have already answered a little bit of it, um, but this is from Victor. How can you save report definitions with a first day of the year variable when your current reporting month is January? You could wait until your current reporting month is February, or you could create the report definition and then edit the file with a text editor and change the beginning month variable to beginning year. Editing of the report can also be useful when you want to save a report definition with a last day of the year variable when your current reporting month is December. You could edit the file with okay, a okay, okay, okay. change the end month variable time, time to end year. Hey. <laughs> I, think, I think what Victor's done is pasted some information from health in there. So. Yeah, so it, it, I, I don't know that there was a question in there, but that I, I think we've covered that. Yeah. So, yep. um, okay, that's that. Um, it, it, you know, I will say that it sounds like from what Victor pasted in there that these may be stored out here and could be edited with the text editor. However, I think that the way that, that STI has designed these programs, the people at Tab3 Practice Master have designed these programs, that's kind of beyond the scope of what I think most people would want to do. I think most people want to use, and I think that the help section that, that Victor pasted in uh, really kind of goes back to a time when it was very difficult to go back and change my current reporting month to December of last year. Now you can do that very easily. You can say, hey, if I'm going to run these reports, I want to run them from a perspective where my current reporting month was December of last year, and you can do that. Uh, before, was it version 18, Mary Jo? 
um, you had to advance your month. So when you went from December of 2016 to January 2017, you couldn't go back. And now you can. And so it's very easy to, as long as you define them right with your beginning and ending month or beginning and ending year, uh, has, has your, 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 your base variable, if you will, as it describes in help, then all you need to do to get back there is really just use the current reporting month to get back to December 2016 and be able to do what you need to do. Okay. And with that, we'll tell you that um, next month we're going to talk about reporting and trust. Uh, Mary Jo and I were looking this morning at what to talk about, or I guess last month, about what to talk about next month. And we decided we haven't really gone into great detail in what reports are available in the trust accounting system. So Mary Jo is going to take that topic, and I'm going to talk about something that's new in version 18, which is automatic trust payments. The ability to say, hey, don't make me do a trust payment. If the guy owes us money, if the matter owes money, then we're going to automatically pull it out of trust. And that can be done now, so we're going to outline the steps that are necessary to do that. And, of course, as we know, it wouldn't be a... Uh, Tabs Free Virtual User Group meeting without my taking you to attorneycomputersystems.com. Notice how I emphasize that S in the last, uh, the last S in the word system. Attorneycomputersystems.com. If you either hover over the word videos or get anxious like me and actually click on it, you will either see a list or you will be taken to a page that lists all of our videos. You'll notice that we have four live events. You're currently in a live event, the Tabs Free Virtual User Group Meeting. We also have the Practice Master Virtual User Group Meeting and the World Docs Virtual User Group Meeting. And I also have a monthly webinar where I, uh, that I call the Coffee Pot Webinars. And that is where I will pull in somebody from another company that has a product that offers value to people that are using Tabs Free Practice Master or World Docs and get them to show us that product. Um, these, if you click on the More Info button or just click on it in the list that I hovered over, uh, you'll be taken to a page where you'll see what the next one is. You'll see information about the previous ones. Now, this one, uh, this, this uh, uh, Coffee Pot webinar is still in post-production, so it's not available to be watched online as a recording, but all the others are. So as you scroll down, you'll see recorded versions of the bugs, the virtual user group meetings for tabs and Practice Master and World Docs and the Coffee Pot webinars, and you'll be able to watch them whenever you want. You can also see our two uh, non-live non events, the eBytes video series that Mary Jo does each month. She does three of them, one on tabs, one on Practice Master, one on World Docs. Very short little one or two or three minute videos where she finds something really cool and just says, hey, did you know you could do this? Look at that. Isn't that cool? And uh, we also have our longer format Paul and Mary Jo show where either I or Mary Jo will take a broader topic and spend, oh, eight or ten minutes, sometimes 15, 20 minutes, going into great detail about that broader topic. So please be sure to use the search capabilities or just browse and take advantage of these videos. They're there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, except for was it last year that was leap year? 366 days a year, every four years. Everybody have a good rest of the afternoon and a good rest of the month, and we will see you in April. Thanks. Bye-bye.